As we turn now to the Word of God, let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your love and for the way you teach us your truth. And as we open that word today, we pray that you would help us to attend to the reading of your word and apply your truth to our lives. We ask and pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our reading today is from Luke's Gospel, the eighth chapter, beginning at verse 22. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. And as they sailed, Jesus fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love t-shirts that have a message. Many of us have t-shirts that identify us as fans at different sports teams or universities. I'm sure there's some Michigan t-shirts represented here at some point. That's the, the Wilkins family, they're Michigan fans. And some of us have t-shirts that have various messages on them. I have one t-shirt that says, you can't fix stupid. It has a, an image of a, a man sitting on the limb of a tree and sawing it off and showing that, you know, once he's done, he's gonna fall off himself. Well, doing a, a quick search of the internet, you can find a host of messages on a t-shirt. I'll try to be nicer. If you try to be smarter, four out of three people struggle with math. That's certainly in that, I need that shirt. <laughs> Is it time for second breakfast yet? That's a reference to Lord of the Rings movies. And read books, not t-shirts, probably written by a librarian. One of my favorite t-shirts is uh, the one that has this message, keep calm and carry on. That message has been parodied uh, you know, many times with different versions of the message, things like keep calm and go fishing, keep calm and call Batman, keep calm and eat cookies, keep calm and use the force. And one that I saw just this past week on Facebook, a new parody, keep calm and wash your hands, which of course is a reference to the, what's going on with the coronavirus. The phrase, keep calm and carry on, actually goes back to England when the British were preparing for war with Germany, expecting to be bombed by the German Air Force, which of course occurred. The British government produced over two million of these posters with that message, keep calm and carry on. The message reflects the stiff upper lip attitude of British culture. The government wanted people to remain calm in the face of adversity and to keep doing what they normally do carry on. The message reminds me of this story from the Gospel of Luke where the disciples are with Jesus in this boat and all of a sudden a storm arises and it was so bad that the disciples feared for their lives. The text tells us that the boat was filling with water and they were in great danger. In the meantime, Jesus is asleep. This was not something they imagined. The danger was real and from what I've read, about the area, the Sea of Galilee. It is subject to sudden violent storms because of its location. When cool air from the Mediterranean Sea comes into contact with the hot, humid air that rests over the Sea of Galilee, it often results in sudden violent storms. That actually reminds me very much of the kind of weather we sometimes experience here in Central Florida with our proximity to oceans on either side of us and lakes that are north and south of us. Well, in ancient times, they didn't have access to AccuWeather forecasts that they could consult before they started their day, and they didn't have smartphones that warned them of severe weather to come. And so these storms on the Sea of Galilee sometimes caught them by surprise. There are two things I want to lift up about this story today. That the first one relates to how we grow in our knowledge of Christ, and the second relates to how uh, his power to help us deal with the storms of life. First, 
The calming of the storm was a part of the incremental revealing of the Lord's identity to his disciples. When the disciples first accepted or answered the call, the invitation to follow Jesus, at first they didn't know much about him. They knew they could tell that he had this charisma and a personality that was compelling. You know, it, it led them to, to drop everything and follow him, but they did so without knowing much about him. They saw that he had the power to heal different diseases, and so this was appealing. They were impressed with his teaching, especially his parables, and the way he interpreted the law of Moses with a, a different or special kind of authority. They even saw him raise a young man from the dead. Later, they would see him cast out demons and feed a huge crowd of people with a, a handful of fish and a couple loaves of bread. And they would see him, some of them would see him talking to Moses and Elijah on the mountain during his transfiguration. But the really big reveal, of course, didn't come till much later when Jesus died on the cross and then rose from the dead after three days. At this point, they were just starting to learn about Jesus, and they were amazed that this man had power over the natural ele elements. Who is this man that even the winds and the waves obey him? The Gospels, of course, were written after the cross and resurrection. The early church looked back at the life and ministry of Jesus, Jesus through the lens of those events, knowing that Jesus was Lord and Savior, the very Son of God, the Messiah that had been predicted in the Old Testament. But at this point, the disciples did not know that. And even after the resurrection of Jesus, it took some time for them to get it. Some people are a little dense. I certainly count myself in that category. The Gospels portray the disciples as, as people who didn't get it at first. The women who followed Jesus were probably better at understanding things about him than the twelve. Peter, especially, especially in the Gospel of Mark, is, is portrayed as rather clueless. And I find that to be very helpful in my own walk of faith because I know that I haven't always fully understood Christ's identity, his calling, his teaching, and his power to do great things in my life. I have grown in my understanding of those things through the years, as I hope all of you have grown as well. And that's what faith formation is all about. Our faith doesn't stop developing when we're baptized or when we finish confirmation class or graduate from high school or finish our formal education, graduate from seminary, get ordained, or read the Bible from cover to cover five or six times. If we are walking with Jesus, we are always learning. In regard to the church, in our tradition, we say that the church is reformed and always in the process of being reformed. That reformation never stops. At no point can we say, as a church or as an individual, we have finally arrived and we don't need to grow anymore. And that's one reason why our tradition has what we call a book of confessions, which contains 10 creedal documents that the church has produced through the centuries to express our faith. Now, during my ministry here at Oakland, we have used primarily the Apostles' Creed in worship because it lends itself so well to worship. But there are nine other documents that are part of our Book of Confessions. It's an illustration that the church is always growing in its understanding. So this story suggests that we should expect to learn more about Jesus throughout our lives. We can expect our relationship with him to deepen as he reveals more and more about himself to us as we walk with him. My wife and I have used a devotional book that almost every day since we've been married, actually before we were married, called Our Daily Bread. It's produced by the Radio Bible Class. It, it only takes five to 10 minutes a, a day to read, but we are often amazed at how the Bible reading and the little devotional, the little application or the story, how it's chosen and written by somebody who has 
who does not know us and maybe did it weeks and months ago, how often what they've chosen will speak to us and sometimes offer a new insight or remind us of some truth that we have forgotten. We are still learning and still growing in our relationship with Christ. Just as the disciples learned something more about Jesus in that boat when he calmed the storm, we will learn more about him too as we continue to walk with him. The second thing I want to lift up is the way the story speaks to us when we face what we might call the storms of life. All of us experience times in our lives when we, are, we may be overwhelmed by external forces assailing us. As a student, we may fail a test in school or get dumped by our girlfriend or boyfriend. We maybe don't make the team and get cut from the, the squad. We don't get the score we need on the SAT to get in the school or the college we want to attend. We may have to declare bankruptcy. We may lose a job that we loved or get, we don't get the promotion we felt we deserved. We get a diagnosis of some dreaded disease like cancer or, or a loved one passes away. At some point in our life, we will experience turbulent times, and when those times assail us, we want to remember that Jesus encourages us to trust him, to trust that he has the power to calm the waters and, and quiet the wind. Now, that does not mean that he'll keep us from experiencing turbulent times, but it, he will get us through. He'll keep the wind and the rain from sinking our ship. Our job is is to trust him. One of my favorite stories from the Bible is the story of Joseph, the favorite son of Jacob. You may recall that he was the one who was so hated by his brothers that they grabbed him one day and they sold him to a bunch of traders who were on their way to Egypt. They made up a story to tell their father claiming that Joseph had been killed by wild animals and they produced some bloody clothing to, to prove their story as evidence. And while Jacob mourned the death of his son, Joseph was taken to Egypt and sold as a slave to a man by the name of Potiphar, who was a, an official in the court of Pharaoh, the king. Joseph did a good job in his responsibilities, managing his, his master's household, but he was falsely, falsely accused of something he did not do and ended up in prison. It doesn't get any worse than being a slave in prison. But Joseph never lost his faith in God. He continued to be faithful in the things he was given to do, even in prison. And eventually he came to the attention of Pharaoh because of his ability to interpret dreams. He was freed from prison and given a high office and given great responsibility in the Egyptian court to prepare for the famine that he told the Pharaoh was coming. And because Joseph had this great power and authority, and because he was faithful, he was able to save his own family and thousands and thousands of more people from the terrible famine that did in fact come. And he not only saved his family, but he forgave his brothers for what they had done to him. He forgave his brothers. Joseph kept calm and carried on. He trusted God to take care of him through the storms of his life. And that's precisely what God did did. There have been times in my life when I have felt that the waves caused by the storms were going to sink my ship, but because of what I have learned from the Bible and from great people of faith who, who taught me things about the Christian life, I knew that Jesus had the power to, to calm the storm. I've learned to have faith in the one who calmed that storm on the Sea of Galilee so many years ago. He is still in the business of rebuking the wind and the raging waters that threaten his people. He's still in that business. And so I've learned to keep calm and carry on. Because, not because of my own strength and ability, but because of his love, because of his love and his desire to keep us safe through the storms of life. And that's what we all need to do. Keep calm and trust God. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for your truth that we find in Scripture. 
and the calling we find there to, to keep calm and trust Jesus. Help us, O oh God, to put our faith in him, the one who has the ability to calm the storm. We ask and pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.